I'm Paul Levinson, and this is Light On, Light Through, episode 22, Lost, Anatomy of a Loss. Now, as that title might suggest to you, all is not well with Lost, at least not to me, and I'm afraid to say to many other people as well. The superb series that started out on ABC with such promise, uh, the season before last, actually more than promise, it really revolutionized television. It was a dramatic, exciting, revolutionary experiment in television. I'm afraid to say that all of that may now be irreparably in jeopardy. And I've been struggling with what to think and do about Lost, and so I decided I'd devote this episode to Light On, Light Through about that topic. If struggle sounds like too melodramatic a word, you can substitute another television series that you loved, or a movie series, or a series of books even a group of friends or family members. I think whenever we feel passionate about anything, the dynamics are the same. When you come to love something, it becomes part of your world, part of your basic operating principles. You get your bearings from that. Even something which might seem as trivial as a television show, you see it once a week, it sort of becomes part of your clothing part of, if you wear glasses, what you wear to see the world. You can choose your metaphor, but it all amounts to the same thing. You rely upon that, and you see the world through it to some extent. But then, one day, you realize that what you've been enjoying, or thought you've been enjoying, just isn't the same. Now, the specifics of how this happened with Lost almost don't matter, but they are interesting to think about, so let's go over them. The first season, as I said, I thought was wildly successful, a story that got more complex yet more attractive with every episode. It was an early success for viral marketing, too. There were web pages put up to Oceanic Airlines, Charlie's Music, Never was Coleridge's willing suspension of disbelief more easily coaxed. If you kept your eyes half-closed and you looked at Lost and then you logged on to the web and looked at what was written there, sometimes you couldn't tell what was real or imagined or created. Exactly what a romp in fiction on the edge of reality should be. No one knew what to expect at the start of the second season. And in fact, the first season was so good that I didn't know the second season was not that good until well into the year. But in retrospect, when I was watching it week after week, it was as if I was slow dancing with a dead person who I thought was still alive. There's a great scene in Thunderball in which James Bond, played in that movie by Sean Connery, is dancing with a villainess who gets shot in the head. And Bond quips, she's just dead on her feet. But with Lost, we didn't know that. We didn't know the series was dead or dying or really even in danger, in part because the second season actually wasn't on every week and the flow and progress of the show was difficult to fathom. But when the dust cleared at the beginning of last summer, it was clear that we'd been duped. No real progress had been made in getting to the bottom of Lost's mysteries. I wrote an essay about those mysteries over a year ago in which I pointed out and argued that the best part of Lost and the key to understanding what was going on was in the inexplicable series of coincidences in the back stories. Uh, For example, Jack and Desmond running into each other on the steps of that stadium before they ever came together on the island. And I actually wrote an essay about that. You can find it on paullevinson.blogspot.com. But rather than moving the story forward, 
after that wonderful first year with all of those inexplicable tantalizing coincidences, Lost instead moved sideways or nowhere. And this year, season three, well, the fall I think was a little better than season two, but it was pretty much just more of the same. The, the modus operandi of Law seems to have become, starting with the second season, introducing new characters, introducing new incredible things, without ever really resolving what was raised in the first season. And so by the end of the first part of the third season, we still had not moved really any closer to understanding what was going on. We did have a few good shows with some good characters, but really nothing was revealed to get us closer to the truth. And now, two new episodes have been broadcast of the resumed Season 3. Now, as I mentioned in last week's Light On, Light Through, I thought that first episode was very good. In fact, probably the best episode since the original first season. And the episode that was on this past Wednesday, this featured Desmond. It was one way of interpreting it. certainly was a time travel episode. There was certainly a lot of monkeying around, which actually I love in time. And I enjoyed it, but also it really did not move us any closer to understanding what's going on on that enchanted island. So, although I enjoyed them, and although I'll continue watching Lost, I have to admit that before I fully commit to that dance again, I'm going to keep an eye out for signs of life on the series. And... A part of me is afraid to say it, but it may be too late. On the other hand, I do think it's technically still alive, and while there's life, there's hope. And I'd advise you, whenever you watch a television series, to do the same, because it's sort of interesting. We invest so much time if we enjoy a television series, and sometimes we don't even realize that we've crossed over into really wasting our time. And sometimes the networks keep a series on far too long. Unfortunately, they also make the other mistake, as we saw with Kidnap this past fall, where they cut a series off before it really has a chance to establish an audience. And I think in the case of Kidnap, what they did on NBC was really a mistake because it was a great series. But as far as Lost, we'll just keep watching and see what happens. And we just have one flash for you today, but it's a big, bad flash. The FCC circulated a report in Congress. They started circulating it, I don't know when, but it became public just this past Friday. And, and here's the brilliant report that the FCC has been circulating. The FCC thinks that Congress has the right to crack down on violence on television, in particular torture portrayed on television, but violence in general, because, according to this FCC reasoning, Congress already has the right to regulate sex on television. So the FCC is encouraging Congress to now extend their regulation of the media even further. Well, guess what? Wake up, FCC. We have a First Amendment in this country, I know that you and Congress have been ignoring it for the very length of time that you, the FCC, have been in existence, that is, since the 1930s, and uh, so has Congress for most of the 20th century. But the FCC and Congress should recognize that, last time I checked, no one repealed the First Amendment. It's still the First Amendment to our Constitution. And so it's the height of cynicism and it's the height of the complete disregard uh, of the Constitution and the First Amendment for the FCC to be encouraging Congress 
to increase its regulation of media. Now, just to be clear, I'm no fan of torture on television, but the last thing we want to do is call in the government watchdog to start ripping apart what TV and radio and all of our media are attempting to present to the American people. You know what? If Americans don't like violence in the media, they'll stop watching it. We don't need Congress and the FCC to tell us what to watch. I did have one other thought on this. Remember Keith Oberman attacked 24, the Fox show? That was a few weeks ago because part of what he was concerned about was the glorification of torture on 24. Well, first of all, as I mentioned back then, Oberman was just completely wrong. 24 does not glorify torture. As a matter of fact, there are many good guys on the show who come out against torture, and over and over again, torture is not seen as a reliable way of getting information. But uh, perhaps uh, Keith Oberman can see now how foolish his attack on 24 was. And uh, I don't know what comfort, if any, he will derive from now being in the same bed as the FCC and its flagrant disregard for the First Amendment. The Light on Light Through podcast is proud to be part of the Blueberry Network. That's blueberry with no ease dot com. Hey, if you want to make an impact online, check out GoDaddy.com. It has .com names for as low as $1.99. Plus, they have world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. And if you mention the special code POD4, that's POD4, you'll get 10% off your web hosting. Or BLU4, that's Blue4, gives you 10% off everything else you may buy at GoDaddy.com. Hey, first I want to thank Patsy Terrell for that really sweet light on light through blueberry promo that you heard a little earlier. And yes, uh, Light on Light Through is proud to be part of the Blueberry community. And we're also proud to be talking about GoDaddy.com. You know, GoDaddy had a little run-in with Fox a few years ago, not Fox News, Fox Entertainment, in which some of you may remember GoDaddy's perfectly fine Super Bowl commercial was pulled after one showing Uh, during the Super Bowl. So that's yet another example of what happens when the FCC starts breathing down everyone's neck. And uh, that's why also I'm especially proud uh, to be talking about GoDaddy.com. Anyone who's a victim of the FCC uh, and its censoring ways is a friend of mine. But now, moving on to other things, Uh, I have some happy news to tell you about a variety of things. You're going to be hearing in our promo suite uh, a nice little piece by Sean Farrell talking about the Silk Code Patio book. You may remember I mentioned this to you last week. Well, it's live now. In fact, the first five chapters are up at patiobooks.com, all set to go. And if you log on to lightonlightthrough.com, the Light On Light Through webpage, you'll find a link to patiobooks.com, or you can go there directly. And for most of this week, the Silk Code has been in first place in the new editions, the number of subscriptions and listens they've received over on patiobooks.com. So, you know, it's free. You can't beat that. And uh, it is a patio book of my award-winning novel, The Silk Code. It was my first novel, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy Sean Farrell's great reading of it. I loved it. Of course, I'm a little biased, but I think you'll like it, too. Now, another important announcement. I have a new blog and a new place that I think of as my nightclub. And you know that I have a blog over on MySpace. I've talked about that. I have the paullevinson.blogspot.com 
blog. You know me, I write a lot, I talk a lot, I have four podcasts, Light On, Light Through is one of them, there's Ask Lev, my two or three minutes of advice about writing and milking the media, and I even have a little piece there about green tea, Levinson News Clips, my two to five minute reviews of television shows, including Lost, But 24, Rome, movies like Deja Vu, and my Words and Music by Paul Levinson, which has uh, songs, radio plays, interviews with me. Most recently for Valentine's Day, uh, I put on Words and Music by Paul Levinson, my song, The Soft of Your Eyes, that I wrote for my then-girlfriend, Tina, back in 1968. Uh, She became my wife in 1976. I'm happy to say we're still married, so I put that song out as a Valentine's present for her, but you can listen to it on Words and Music by Paul Levinson. You'll find links to all of those podcasts over on Light On, Light Through. And this is what I was leading up to. You'll also find all four of those podcasts over on Paul Levinson. By now, I assume you know how to spell my name. PaulLevinson.net. So it's my name, PaulLevinson.net. And that blog is actually much more than a blog. There are pieces that I put up sometimes as often as two, three times a day. I have a piece on the FCC. I have a piece on Gore and Obama, uh, a piece that discusses some of the same things you heard in this podcast about Lost. I update that very frequently. But in addition, over on paullevinson.net, you'll find a podcast page with all four of my podcasts all up to date. You can click on whatever you like and listen to them. You'll find another page, Paul on Television, with all of my television appearances that are now on YouTube. And as a matter of fact, uh, I just the other day uploaded to YouTube a, about a two-minute or so compilation of what I said on the Discovery Channel special on the cell phone back in December. I can't remember whether I told you I was going to appear on that then or not, because so many things were going on in December. It was near the end of the month, and uh, there was a great show on the Discovery Channel, The Inside Story of the Cell Phone, and they got desperate and asked me to come on, and as usual, I was talking my head off, and you can see a nice compilation of those clips uh, on YouTube, but also on the paullevinson.net site. There's also a place where you can click on and read about all of my books. For example, The Silk Code. You can read all the reviews of it. By the way, I should mention The Plot to Save Socrates, my current novel, will be released this coming Tuesday. That's February 20th, 2007, in trade paperback. What that means is you can get it for just about $10 or so new on Amazon and most other places. You can actually read the reviews about The Plot to Save Socrates also on paullevinson.net, and you can click on the picture of the book there, and it takes you right to Amazon, and you can buy it that way if you like. So there's lots of great stuff there, and the paullevinson.net blog is part of the Rudius Media Group, and you'll find some really uh, interesting blogs by other people as well. Bob Green, uh, who's written books about power, sex, and history. Tucker Max, you may have heard of him. And uh, other people like Bill Dawes. It's a really interesting collection uh, of writers, and uh, I'm happy to have uh, this new PaulLevinson.net over there. And as I said, I sort of think of it as, as my nightclub. You know, my space is my living room where I have lots of friends. Well, PaulLevinson.net, think of it as a nightclub that I just opened up, and it's well-stocked. With, with podcasts, with book reviews, with my blog posts, with my television, and, you know, all of those uh, goodies. So I hope when you have a chance, you go over there, paullevinson.net. Now, uh, several other promos that I just want to tell you about. You're going to hear once again at the beginning of our promo suite, the one and only Mike Thanks. And he uh, has been doing some great shows. Also go over to Talk shoe.com because Mike has started a film review uh, podcast. It's a live podcast and uh, 
check it out over there or go over to MikeThinks.com and you'll probably find a direct link to it. And you'll also hear some other interesting promos coming up by all kinds of people. Uh, You know, the podcast world is really, really booming, and I'm really enjoying uh, talking to and and being a part of it. I read somewhere that uh, someone expects that, I don't know, by the year 2009, there'll be billions of dollars spent on podcast advertising. Well, that's nice to, to think about. That is advertisers buying time on podcasts. But if there's that much money being spent then on advertising, that will only be because there are so many people listening to it. So you who are listening to Light On, Light Through now, whether you're subscribing to it through iTunes, whether you're going over to the lightonlightthrough.com webpage, whether you're listening to it on blueberry.com, whether you're over on paullevinson.net, hey, hi, if you're over there, I appreciate all of you. And uh, I hope you keep listening. We're going to have some exciting shows in the weeks ahead. In the meantime, sit back, relax, enjoy. the Mike Thinks Podcast, www.mikethinks.com. News and current events with an opinion. The Mike Thinks Podcast. It's the news you missed. www.mikethinks.com. From patiobooks.com. The day started just like any other day. Always does. Until I watched one of my closest friends die, right in my arms. Nothing I could do. But his death was a beginning, not an end. And now I've been thrust into a timeless conflict of pyromaniac insects and instant mummification. A war within our very genetic makeup. And when the powers of the ancient world collide with modern technology, no one is safe. Not me. And certainly not you. I'm Dr. Phil D'Amato, NYPD Forensics, and the only way to save myself is to solve the mystery of the Silk Code. The Locus Award winning novel by Paul Levinson comes to life in this free podcast novel Journey into the Ancient World. Witness the wonder of ages past, and join Phil D'Amato in a struggle against forces both ruthless and unseen. Visit www.thesilkcode.blogspot.com to learn more about the author and the novel. And subscribe today at patiobooks.com. Join the battle, witness the wonder, or forever be victim to the awe and power of the Silk Code. Phil D'Amato is ready. Are you? Did you walk out of the Matrix and wonder if you're a battery in a jar? Did you walk out of Daredevil and wonder, what is it like to be a bat? Do you and your friends stay up at night debating good and evil in the Star Wars universe? Does the question of life, the universe, and everything intrigue you? Then open your mind and tune into The Sci-Fi Show, thescifishow.com. And that's Fi with a PH. Do you remember what he looked like? Hey, this is Jake. I do a show called Just Not Right, the podcast. You can find it at notrightpodcast.com. It's funny, fresh, entertaining. I mean, sometimes I'll just take the mic and say, Hey, oh my, you look nice. You are wonderful. Thank you for listening. You are the best. Check it out. There's a segment called Letters from a Utah Nut. It's hilarious. I know you'll love it. I'm writing this letter in regards to your giant D sign located in front of your store. I want to climb it. Please do not climb the sign. Would it be all right if everyone from our company just started singing? Although we enjoy our customers' enthusiasm for our product, it is strange and unusual for large parties to join in chorus in our lobby. 
is it okay for me to be using Windex as a cologne? All SC Johnson products are extensively evaluated for toxicity and safety. <laughs> Hilarious! Do you remember what he looked like? NotRightPodcast.com See you there. In a world full of hopelessness and despair, only two guys had the power to deliver the world from certain destruction. Nathan and Carlos are Podcast Pendulum. Watch it all unfold at podcastpendulum.podomatic.com.